Hello, and welcome everyone. My name is Shurobi Deidhupar, and I lead diversity and inclusion practice for Hinduja Global Solutions. At NGS, we endeavor to promote equity and belonging across all aspects of diversity, implementing people practices to promote inclusion and equity by creating an ecosystem where everyone can thrive. Whether it's instilling self-confidence in women who just step into the workforce or creating a physical and digitally accessible infrastructure, or ensuring there is visible demonstration on allyship, ensuring that all our policies are inclusive for everyone irrespective of gender identity or sexual orientation, we believe in embedding DNI in our DNA and embrace our differences and work towards creating an environment where everyone can learn, grow, and thrive together. It's my pleasure to welcome our speakers today. Please join me in welcoming Melanie D'Souza, Senior Manager, Customer Experience, and Global Pride ERD Lead at Citrix, and Ashish Cha, Director, Automation Solutions at Invesco. Before we start, let's get to know our speakers a little better. Melanie, would you please share a little bit more about yourself with our audience here? Hi, everyone. So excited to be part of uh, RISE uh, for, I think, uh, the second time around. Uh, uh, hate that it's virtual, but um, I think it's really, really great that we're getting this opportunity to interact with everyone. Uh, thanks, Sarovi, for the introduction. Um, as you know, my name is Melanie. I work with Citrix. Uh, I identify as cisgender, um, female, and queer on the LGBTQ spectrum. Uh, my pronouns are she and her. Uh, I lead the customer experience analytics team for Citrix Support Services. And, uh, oh, well, that's my day job. My gay job, as, as everyone has, is I lead the, uh, I started the ERG in Citrix uh, in the Bangalore offices. And um, over the last couple of years, have taken over the uh, ERG for Global Citrix as well. Um, I guess, uh, you know, uh, we'll get more talking on the in, in the conversation coming up. So I want to jump the gun here and I'll, I'll, I'll let Ashish introduce himself uh, before we go in. Hey, thanks so much. And, and good, afternoon, good afternoon, everyone. It's it's really great to be here. Um, at Invesco, we, we believe in, in, in all forms of diversity and, and we strongly believe in, you know, greater possibilities together and, and celebrate all forms of uh, diversity, whether it is uh, gender, whether it is LGBT or or any other diversities in, in the whole uh, spectrum. Uh, my name is Ashish, and I um, I'm also part of uh, I, I lead the Pride ERG at Invesco, and uh, my day job is I'm a director for automation solution at Invesco. So yeah, as I said, uh, really really excited to be here today and uh, share and learn from all of you. Thank you so much, Melanie, and thank you, Ashish. So let's get the ball rolling with. Um, basics, right? What does building a culture of inclusion means at your workplace? And more importantly, whose responsibility is it? <laughs> Melanie, we can start with you. Yeah, no, it's a question I've been asking myself quite a bit. Uh, you know, I think everybody gets it, right? Everybody knows that diversity inclusion is something that can't be just run by one, one part of the organization. It's something that everybody needs to embrace, etc. cetera. Uh, but what I've started realizing, especially over the last years, when it comes down to key actions and goals, right? Let's take LGBTQ inclusion, uh, obviously in, in the topic that we're at. Uh, I think for the larger part of the last couple of years, it's been something that's primarily been driven uh, by the ERG itself. Uh, but if you want to, uh, if you want to like focus on whether it's hiring, whether it's corporate outreach, whether it's education of, you know, uh, employees or anything else that you want to do. Um, the one thing that I've realized is it can't just be led by that tiny group of people that are trying to drive it, right? You have to have representation from HR. You have to have uh, sometimes even legal. You need to have your corporate outreach team. You need to have, uh, you know, you need to have different uh, aspects. And, and the other bit especially is of course the key business leads because at the end of the day, um, whether it is sponsorship that you require for all of these activities, uh, whether it's drive or even just talking about it, right? You need to have the right levels 
skills of people, I believe, from each part of the organization in every effort that you're trying to drive. And it can't just be, you know, an X group of people that are trying to do it at, at this point of time. Yeah. Ashish, what are your thoughts? Well, I think she said most of the things, but um, I think it, it's everyone's business. Um, it's business heads business, ERG's business, uh, even to the last man on the floor, it's, it's their business. Everyone needs to feel that diversity is, is the important uh, element of an organization's success and everyone has to contribute, right? And, and this can be actually shown with little examples or little role models on the floor itself, like having a you know, neutral general washroom, uh, which is immediately visible, uh, having policies that are, uh, you know, uh, not uh, specific uh, to a group type, but open open to everyone. And I, I think these are some of uh, the things that makes place look more inclusive. Um, and and people should go beyond preaching uh, and lip service. They should actually, uh, you know, wear this on their sleeves and step in where, where required. And it could be a very simple example that I could give you is um, if someone is actually cracking a joke, a homophobic joke, uh, I, I think a leader should step in. And if, if an ally like me is around, he or she should actually step in and say, hey, this is not appropriate. And these are the small gesture that, that goes in, in long run. And I have done it and I, I take pride in doing it. Uh, anything which is not appropriate is not appropriate and we should start calling it out. Yeah, and, and it's very, very interesting um, what you just said, Ashish, the, the people, the whole concept of lip service, I think people might not listen to what leaders say, but they will definitely do what the leaders do. So, you know, actions definitely in these cases speak louder than words. Thank you so much for sharing these pieces. And um, uh, a little bit more about the journey that your respective organizations have taken. So, Melanie, you've touched a few things, but, you know, could you share a little bit more about what Citrix is doing um, in terms of LGBT plus inclusion? So, I think one of the, uh, one of the key things that uh, we've realized, and I'm going to talk a little bit on the global front uh, and, and on the India front as well. Because uh, one of the things that we realized is that there are different, uh, you can't have a flat, um, I think, approach across the board, right? You need to customize it to what the need is of a specific uh, area. Now, like in India, the first two years, honestly, were just about what is LGBTQ in the first place? What, you know, what does it mean? What does it mean for me? What does it mean if I'm a people manager and I have someone who's coming out to me, you know, uh, in my team? That was like the biggest apprehension, honestly, a lot of people had. So I think the first year was just what is. Um, the second year, we spent a more focus on uh, empathy. So now that I understand what is, how am I going to build that element of uh, inclusion? So I think inclusion comes only when there is empathy, when I understand what is it that I need to include, right? So they're like, hey, yes, I understand now what these terms, et cetera, are, but how is it that I'm supposed to create this environment? Or what is it that I'm supposed to do? What are the challenges, right, that, that people face? It's only when they understand that what are the challenges, what are the small nuances within the workspace? Like Ashish mentioned, a joke. It, and sometimes it's not even that upfront and in your face, right? Like I say, sometimes it's about hey, um, so are you married or who's your, you know, rather than saying who's your partner, or do you have a partner, who do you live with or, you know, those elements. So it, it, it's, and it's not even sometimes someone who's trying to be offensive in any way. It's just somebody who is, you know, just having a conversation, but not realizing that in doing that, in saying some of those things that actually inadvertently excluding some people in, in the in the team. So so sharing those elements and, and doing that, I guess, through stories and sharing people's own personal journeys, uh, you know, understanding how the different nuances can work. But I think most importantly is also then telling them, you know, through that, what are some of the things that they can do as alternatives? Uh, what I've realized more and more is that everyone does want to be inclusive, but breaking it down into more practical things that leaders, managers need to do in their in their day-to-day -day working is what really helps. And that's kind of what we've been focused on in the last two years. While, of course, we continue the larger goals of 
trying to do more focused hiring and and those elements of it but i think it's in it's it's in the small elements of the people managers and how they engage with their teams that you know uh, has been our largest focus in the last two years yeah yeah and that's very interesting melanie because you know often times my experience has been that people actually have the right intent but they just don't know how you know yeah. so so very interesting examples ashish would you like to share some um these are the words that invesco has um, gotten into in this uh, journey of inclusion so sure. um i think it's not not so much different from uh, what what uh, melanie just said um one thing that we did very very differently is we spent more time in awareness we uh, spent more time in shifting the culture left uh, because that's where it starts uh, if your um, if your vocabulary is is appropriate if you start respecting people for what they bring on to the table versus who they are in terms of identity that's the shift that we are talking about and and that is what we have been able to do so far um we started small um because we just wanted to make sure that we get the basics right so there were a lot of awareness sessions done uh, both locally and globally um we have regional uh, pride chapters and we have a global uh, pride chapter as well right so a typical hierarchy that every organization has right um and there are certain regional nuances as well that you need you need to follow so what we did is we we made sure that there's enough material artifact and verbal presence of the awareness itself so running sessions book reading sessions uh, we we have uh, our yammer group for pride where uh, everyone can post whatever they want uh, there's there's very little restriction as to uh, what you can not post yeah of course you cannot be offensive but then um, there are certain guidelines where you can you know uh, spell your heart out and, and that has actually helped us in terms of uh, deep reach right um, and we have seen this uh, working for us because when um, when we had colleagues joining for commu- from community to work with us not everyone was comfortable about identifying themselves out there but within 6 months uh, they were quite uh, you know open to talk about their preferences their pronouns and and what they bring um, as an individual so i think that that was a good win for us um not because i'm on this platform but i think another thing that we have done is just constantly being part of rise first one and the second <laughs> one and you know uh, ram has been really really a great enabler in that uh, we have run um, one of the awareness session which was hosted by ram and we wish to do another one very very soon and that has been really really a um, good enabler i, I think um, everyone wants to do it everyone gets it uh, the complexity is in in what should i do to contribute what should i do to help i think that is uh, something that needs to be spelt very very clearly uh, visible allyship is what we have actually focused on so we i take pride in wearing it up on my sleeves and i'm i'm out there as visible ally in in any situation or any forum that i i go to and i think that has also helped a lot of other uh, folks in our company to be a, be a visible ally and and dependent trust so people from the community have actually started trusting us um one thing that we have also done consciously is while you know we we try and learn from the corporate ecosystem it is also good to go beyond corporate ecosystem uh, be part of this community outside your corporate boundaries because that's where the real learning comes from that's where you get to know the real struggle um spread awareness about uh, what what invest has done how they are uh, welcoming in terms of uh, diversity of talent um don't really um, intentionally we have not really uh, labeled a job for a for a community or for you know a specific hiring we open it for everyone so that makes it more wide in terms of reach you don't ring fence the the job type and and just open it for everyone to just go and apply uh, we also wish to do a direct integration of our uh, you know job portal internal tally job portal with pride circle so to give us more volume and reach in terms of uh, helping hands to people from community because it's a benefit from both ends uh, you know colleagues from community gets benefited and organization gets benefited in getting diverse pool of talent on on to it yeah so beyond the whole uh, framework and target operating model around diversity this is what we have done that's awesome sorry now i just wanted to add uh, to what ashish as well said right which is especially in 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 terms of leadership uh, and 
I think one of the things which has worked for us, especially in the last year, has been that each of the executive leadership at Citrix has adopted one of the ERGs, right? Which, which in the past has been very, very uh, siloed into an employee resource group, right? But uh, I think with them doing that, what that indicated to the rest of the organization is also uh, in terms of just visibility that, hey, we're serious. Uh, about uh, diversity and inclusion right at the exec level. Uh, we're active in the day-to-day -day involvement of what goes on. We review it. There are business objectives that are tied to it. Uh, you know, we're very, very clear. And, and it gives, um, you know, it gives people who are part of, of driving all of this a sense of purpose as well that, hey, I'm not do it, just doing this for my community, but, you know, I, I know that this is something which is truly a business objective. Uh, the other uh, the other bit that I also wanted to add is in a lot of my conversation with exec leaders, uh, they do want to contribute and they're saying, hey, you know, our schedules are crazy, et cetera, but be demanding. Be, be clear in what you want and say, hey, I need five people from your team in the next three months to help with this project. And, you know, I, and it is for diversity and inclusion. And if, if you have to push me for it and I'll, I'll make sure it gets done. Because like we said, right, when you everyone knows that you need to have everybody when it comes down to asking people to be part of these it doesn't work it, it that doesn't necessarily work out but when you have that level of commitment coming through from uh, you know from a top down approach i think it sets the tone and it sets the the, the message clearly you know to everyone and if i may just add uh, and i think i use this term very very frequently and boldly you should you should stay away from pseudo allies you should not have pseudo allies in your erg or in your yeah. identify them first uh, <laughs> they are deterrents you don't need them uh, and and uh, it is absolutely okay to be you know non-apologetic about asking what you need don't be apologetic when you're asking and, and an example that i can quote is last rise we had two leaders from investco hiring uh, friends from and colleagues from community this year we have six of them so you, you need to put your demands on the table. Yeah, be polite, don't be bullish. But, uh, you know, you need someone who can actually speak their mind up and not just do lip service. So, yeah, identify them and you know, educate them. So don't, don't be harsh to them, but yeah, just educate them. Sometimes um, uh, wearing an, uh, a light tag is also fashion and, and doesn't help. Someone who's really, uh, you know, uh, convinced and uh, wholeheartedly into it, understanding the whole cause is the ones that you need for initial days. Uh, you know, I, I think that's one of one of the things that I always suggest whenever I, I speak or suggest any best practices. Yeah, absolutely. And as the both of you were talking, I must say there's, there's so much of passion that oozes out. Uh, every every bit of you know uh, wisdom that you're sharing on this platform, I'm I'm pretty sure that it's going to rub off the audience. Actually, it's one particular word that you mentioned, and I'm just so intrigued, and I'm sure so is um, so is the audience here. So who's a who's a pseudo ally, Ashi? <laughs> and I I actually learned it really really hard. I I had a friend who who always called himself as an ally and, uh, you know, really talked uh, very passionately about the cause, the intent and, and you know, support that he, he would want to, uh, uh, you know, provide and share. But a um, few drinks down on, on a party, uh, they, you know, he was, he started making those homophobic comments. Uh, started talking about the uh, whole, you know, uh, drama around uh, this multicolor flag, this, that, other. And I was like, no, you are part of my ERG. You are my friend. I've known you for five years. You faked it all. Uh, I would not want you to be, uh, you know, associated with this first learn and then come back. Uh, don't, uh, don't comment if you don't know the subject. And if you need to take time and learn and understand what, allyship is all about and what community is all about it's it's okay not everyone knows it i i never knew this when i started uh, being part of this uh, you know uh, resource group or support group i never knew any of it it was one of the incidents that got me intrigued and uh, here i am today uh, we talk about it at, at family dinners we, uh, my wife is absolutely passionate about this she is she's the one who got me a little motivated more than what i was already so 
um, this means business to me and I, I, I cannot tolerate people who just fake around and uh, I had had those difficult, dis- you know, discussions and arguments, uh, you know, more intellectual arguments with female leaders as well. Uh, if you don't believe it, you don't believe it, it's step out. You, you don't have to fake. So, yeah. I'll, you know, uh, pseudo allies can come in a, in a lot of formats. <laughs> uh, one of them, I think, is people who say, yes, uh, I'm somebody who wants to actively participate. And I, you know, I feel all, uh, yes, the diversity inclusion is important to me. But when the time comes, uh, they just don't show up. Right. And, and I think uh, for anyone, the biggest commitment you can give is time right? In, in our busy, busy, busy schedules, uh, time is the most important thing. And uh, for me, whether it is as simple as showing up for an event, one is hosting, right? You don't have to, you can, there are different levels of allyship, right? So you don't always have to be there part of the organizing committee. And there's different ways that you can do it. And some of it is as simple as just showing up. Uh, and you'll, you'll, you'll realize that, right? You, you'll realize and then yeah, like, like Ashish says, you'll realize who the people are. So yeah, learn to identify who are being uh, pseudo allies. And, and yeah, and, and honestly, especially if they're leaders, I think you need to tackle that head on. Yeah. And, and you and have to be bullish sometimes. Yeah, yeah you, you, you will see mannerism, right? And very, um, one of the examples that's really uh, close to my heart is we had one person who was heading this uh, ERG and we were doing one event where we said, everyone needs to wear baby pink t-shirt tomorrow. And he didn't wear it. And, and when, when we asked, he's like, no, this will be published everywhere. I do not want to be seen in a pink t-shirt. I said, so what? I mean, you are <laughs> heading this ERG. What is it? You no, know, my daughter will see, my son will see, they will make uh, comments. I said, then you are not fit for this. You, you are not able to clear your own biases. You know, you're still so, uh, you know, uh, behind uh, how would you lead this and i had to raise that in, in a forum uh, where the overall diversity council was talking i said no this is this is not correct so yeah identify them you need you need real visible allies who are who are ready to take one for you and you know you would talk both of you talked about you know uh, be aware and, and and get to know who, who are the ones who are taking it and i guess one of the things is that longevity proves that you can't fake it all the time. Nice. So if you have constant connection with them, talk to them, there will be times when you'll find out. And, and that's very interesting. Thank you both of you for uh, sharing these pieces. And it's getting me more intrigued in terms of these journeys. Ashish, you've already mentioned a few of the roadblocks and challenges and how sometimes it's tough to get everyone on board. But let's talk a little bit deeper about it. Um, any particular roadblocks or challenges for all of us who are watching this um, as organizations as well as, as, as individuals, what do you think could be some of the challenges and roadblocks that we must um, think of before we get into? Ashish, let's start with you and then we'll take Melanie's thought. So my answer is twofold, one for the organization itself and one for the community as well, right? Um, I think identifying what you want to achieve, writing your charter very, very clearly is absolutely critical. And don't chase numbers. That is one of the things that I would tell everyone. Uh, that's a big blocker. Uh, the moment you put number, A, you will achieve it by hook or crook. B, uh, you will be chasing only number and not culture. So stay away from that. Uh, those, are, those are the blockers that actually pull you back. Second is um, Invest more on awareness than, you know, uh, just going, talking about things on social media that oh, we are inclusive place, this, that, other, but when the action comes, you are nowhere uh, in the scene. So, and that's another. Um, changing mindsets is also critical. Sometimes what happens is uh, just because your task force or your, uh, you know, workspace is not aware of things, they don't know what, what it means, simple pronouns uh, or even the you know expansion of lgbtq plus most of the people don't know and people who call themselves alive will also not know i can actually bet you today uh, so creating that awareness takes a lot of uh, roadblock off and and you need to identify this this negative trends that that's running in the organization right um how do you um 
how do you create that experience when uh, when someone is coming for interview or uh, someone is working with you from community i think those when we are not able to create those experiences becomes the blocker for for us to uh, grow is, is what i feel um and um i think start start small focus focus on your um, you know experiences uh, creation i think that's one thing and address the problem I, that that's another block you don't don't sleep over uh, small issues if if uh, your employee is not aware of uh, the lgbt aspects or you know uh, the history behind it or how they need to behave spend in 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 making them aware i, I think that that goes a long way and, and that's what we have done uh, we've intentionally make you know made sure that there is enough awareness so that these these roadblocks uh, go away um the other roadblock that i would say is um the leadership support if you if you do not have right leadership support if you don't have right traction from the top that itself becomes one of the biggest blockers to move ahead uh whether you like it or not uh, gender diversity gets you know a bigger share and uh, this becomes secondary so there has to be a balance uh, between uh, these things and, and identifying your purpose takes care of all this all these blockers you will have character type blockers for sure and you need to deal with it i like that character type blockers <laughs> thanks thanks sashi melani uh so yeah ashish uh, pretty uh, much covered a lot of it uh some of the bits that i think i'd like to add is um what roadblock sometimes is the demotivating factor of i'm doing all of these things however i don't know whether it's making an impact because unlike um like women in the workspace right that that's an easy demographic to measure and and you know it, it, it's something you can put a clear number to and you can see that uh, you know you can see the needle moving on that or whatever it might be right um it can get a bit difficult um you know and while i know ashish did, did mention don't don't add uh, don't add any numbers to to things uh, i know as businesses we do often want to put a number to that or it's about you know so you need to look at what are the things that you can can consider to be success measures it could be uh, how many people attend the sessions that we host right uh, is my participation growing uh, if you do have a, an uh, not an anonymous but a, a confidential self identification on your hr systems that could be an internal measure that you track right uh, so it's important to understand and 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 you know i, I think not let yourself get demotivated because you don't uh, it, it's not as visible that there are um, you know that that you are changing uh, but i guess the more uh, people that are involved in the conversations uh, the easier it is to have conversations and the quicker it is to get to, uh, to to get to the table to have those conversations are also smaller indicators that you are making uh, a difference in the organization Uh, the other one i wanted to touch base also is what ashish men mentioned in terms of mind blocks right that people do have i think it's it's also important to create spaces where people can talk about safely you know uh, create the safe spaces where people can talk about some of the prejudices that they might have and allow them to address it because the one thing that i think can really really hamper is people who have these thoughts but are too afraid to express them and therefore because they don't express them you can't address it right so it, it's a bit of a balance of, of of both of those things that you need to do here so hey, one more thing that i just wanted to add and I'm sorry i didn't say this in the first instance uh while when you are leading this ergs or or business resource group you know that there are certain people from community working with you right don't push for them to come out don't don't push for them to announce to the world that you know they are from community or pull them out of closet let them do it when they want because one wrong move and your entire effort is going to go away one one bad taste yeah. and your entire effort is going to go in vain so let people uh, take their own time let them feel comfortable uh, enjoy the safety net and then if they wish to come out let them come out if they don't please do not push them yeah and and it's very very uh, crucial to note this point because it can have a huge impact on their life it's, it's something hugely personal right so 
you know pushing someone to do that for the sake of driving uh, results is it's not it's going to be futile uh, to say the least and melanie something that you mentioned uh, of creating safe spaces in fact recently i was talking to a senior um leader and they mentioned that you know i tell all my senior uh, business leaders that you have a doubt you please come and talk to me i am the safe space for you please go ahead even if you think it is wrong you come ahead and tell it to me and and let's talk it and i think uh, what you were also saying is that creating these spaces is so important because then you are persuading more people to join in because if they are afraid then they are actually going to even with the right intent Yeah. they will they will try and sway away from it so thank you for sharing that immensely immensely um helpful point both of you and i guess the one big thing for me was you know the whole aspect of chasing numbers versus chasing impact try to chase impact and not the numbers um something that both of you have spoken about a lot during these last few um when it's about the the whole concept of erg so i would really be interested and i'm sure so are the audiences to know um how does one go about setting up an erg number one and and how do you kind of you know um go ahead and and accelerate the conversations that are happening but also um the flip side of it uh, do you think often times when there are ergs created do you think often the onus of getting things done moves to the erg or the people from the community rather than the organization taking uh, the ownership and melly i can see you smiling a lot and i'm pretty sure you have a lot of thoughts so please go ahead yeah uh, so yeah like i said it's a question i've been asking myself a lot right uh, so when i started the erg initially uh, of course uh, I, i agree an erg needs to be an erg needs to be created from the community or allies especially within the community uh, a is being for the for a very long time one of the only out people in citrix uh, india uh, it, you know i clearly knew i couldn't do it all single handedly right i did have a lot of hr support in what i i did when i was starting it off but at the other hand uh, i did realize as well there are a lot of people out there uh, who are allies like ashish who are very very uh, uh, very very passionate about wanting to create this either because sometimes they know somebody or they've had or they've seen uh, or and you know uh, something's hit them somewhere where you know they they've realized that hey uh, you know i i really want to be part of that and can be equally uh, passionate people uh, to be part of the erg uh on the other hand i've also realized that sure i might have all the passion in the world you know and therefore it keeps me motivated and wanting to run but i can't do it all you know and nor can the erg do it all uh, you know just, like i mentioned a little bit earlier you need recruitment involved you need corporate uh, you know csr involved you need leadership across the uh, the board you definitely need hr you need legal sometimes you need you know you need all of this uh and i think more and more um, the way i see it in an ideal world uh, i know at the definitely at citrix are not there yet but hoping to get there in an ideal world i think uh, the erg can be the source of identifying certain roadblocks or identifying areas where the business should work on but actually owning the implementation or the action of each of these elements needs to belong to the owners within those groups right so if i ident- i identify that there's a policy that i think needs to uh, that that perhaps needs to get fixed uh, cuz i'm i'm noticing maybe you know whatever training i recently did and i noticed something was off there then i should be able to just flag it to somebody and they take complete ownership of that right of whether it's uh, you know uh, getting uh, gender neutral washrooms for example that has to then you know it's hey we don't have gender neutral washrooms and somebody takes it on but i think more and more what's ending up happening is that from the idea itself of hey we need to fix this to driving implementation to talking to leaders to getting the sponsorship for it everything seems to fall within you know within the erg and i don't think that uh, a is long term sustainable and and b is i don't believe that's true diversity inclusion right uh, it has to permeate to every single aspect and everybody owns it in the true way that they own it not just saying that they own it mm. so i guess it's more about being a catalyst than yeah. than the one actually and doing exactly. it and it, and it just absolutely makes sense ashish any thoughts on that 
You just took my word. So yeah, <laughs> I think ERG is the catalyst. Uh, and as I said in, in the beginning, it, it's everyone's business. Um, you just don't, you just don't, and you cannot just put everything on one person or one group because they are passionate about it and they want to bring the change. It doesn't work um, simply because even they have the job and their bandwidths are thin and slim at times, which we should be appreciative about and, and mindful about as well, right? Um, because um, let's understand this is not this is not revenue stream that you know people will blow two hundred percent. This is this is beyond your day job. Hence, you need to respect uh, their availability as well, and everyone needs to support it. Uh, that's absolutely critical, and. Um, you need to bring that maturity in the organization. And again, it goes back to culture that you don't really have to beg and convince for running this initiative, right? You know, oh, we should do this because we look good at social presence, or we should do this because everyone else is doing. No, it has to be the calling from the top to the last man on the floor. I think that's, that is the only mantra to succeed, nothing else. Uh, you, you don't do this for tick box. You have to do it for your heart and you should feel good about it. If, if I take pride in doing something uh, for, for the community or for the cause, uh, I don't know if cause is the right word, but for the community. Um, and if everyone who's attached to this uh, organization takes pride, job well done. And, and if, if, the whole discussion around uh, diversity, LGBTQ+, brings a smile on everyone's face, be it leader, people from community, or anyone else on the floor, job well done. I think that is the true measure, and that is what we all should strive to do. All right. And I'm enjoying this conversation, and as much as I am, I'm very, very cognizant of the time. But one last question before we close it. Um, both of you, as you know, there's a huge uh, audience that, that's watching this and there must be people who would be um, getting to go join the cause as you were talking about, um, joining this, this journey of inclusion. So give us one tip for the audience out there who really wants to make a difference. What can they do? So this is for everyone out there or everyone who's, who's hearing us or will be... Uh being part of uh, rice take that plunge it's beautiful trust trust the process it's it's good you feel good uh, and i think there's nothing there's no way else that you could me measure the happiness when you think that you have contributed your bit and and one word of caution if you don't know anything please seek help and ask um, don't don't stay behind thinking oh i don't know if i speak about this how will how will other feel uh, if you don't know about the subject, it's okay to ask. Not everyone knows everything. And uh, final word, um, you know, lend your ear, listen, and, and not judge. I think that will make the biggest difference. Nalini? Uh, so firstly, for everyone who's listening, thank you for being here because I think uh, showing up, like I always say, is always the first step. Uh, so if it's one thing that I'd like to, uh, to leave everybody with, it's make the time. Uh, it is important. Like Ashi says, you will feel great. I don't believe there's been many sessions <laughs> that one has had and said that was a complete waste of my time. No matter what it is, you always learn something new. I always learn something new every single day from every single session. So show up. Um, I think that's, you know, it's it's sometimes as simple as showing up. Yeah, absolutely. I couldn't agree more. You know, show up, show, show your time to that person, listen without judging them. I mean, none of this actually requires a lot of resource. You could be anybody and, and do that. And like like Melanie mentioned, uh, all those who joined the session, that itself is a huge step. And actually, like you were talking about, uh, you know, find out, get to know. Um, we type the weirdest of things in Google and get the answers. So, mm -hmm. so yeah, there's no stopping us from getting the right answers. Um, and and Pride Circle is a good repository of all the useful resources that you might need. So on that note, um, Melanie, Ashish, thank you so much. What an insightful conversation uh, this has been. Um, 
so much that you have done in your individual capacity as well as in, you know your respective organizations um let's let's reiterate that that uh, inclusion of any kind for any community is everybody's responsibility and even if you think that you're playing the smallest role uh, do know that it can actually end up having a big impact on someone so with that thank you so much once again for taking the time out and um, thanks for joining us thank you so much thanks